in today's show. We're looking ahead to week four in the NBA. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Thank you for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available on all platforms. We also have shows for every team. So if you want to hear the latest about Michael Porter Jr. and his back issue, go and check out Locked On Nuggets with Adam and Matt. They'll have all of the details for you over there. So what we're doing today is looking at week four, how the schedule breaks down, streaming plans, weekly league ads and starts and sits and all that sort of stuff. So let's get into it and let's look at how the week shakes out. It is a pretty interesting week, I think. Uh, I think you'll agree. We have 16 teams playing four games. Those 16 teams are the Memphis Grizzlies, Phoenix Suns, the Pelicans, the Warriors, the Nets, the Hornets, the Lakers, the Blazers, the Bucks, the Wolves, Nuggets, Sixers, Clippers, Bulls, Heat, and Hawks. They all play uh, four games this week. 12 more teams play three games. The Rockets, the Kings, the Spurs, the Pistons, the Knicks, Mavericks, Raptors, Thunder, Celtics, Jazz, Cavs, Pacers, and that's it. And then two teams, unfortunately, play two games. The Wizards and the Magic. The, uh, the fantasy realm is out for this two weeks. Or for this week with only two games. The Wizards and the Magic. Shit out schedule for those guys. Not uh, not ideal at all if you have Wizards or Magic players. Because uh, those two games are going to make them you know, really pretty useless. It's also a really, really interesting week in terms of... Well, actually, before we get on to that. Just though, and those 16 teams that play four games. Not all of those four game weeks are created equally. I mean, they sort of are for weekly leagues, but for daily changes leagues, they are vastly different. We'll get onto that in a second. The way the week is set out is also pretty interesting. We have eight games on a Monday. Really nice start to the week with an eight-game Monday. And then the three-game Tuesday. That's boring as shit. Hate when they have those three-game days. Um, And then the NBA just decides to go ham. And 13 games. Again, that's almost as bad as having a uh, three-game day. And then we, we back it up with three more on Thursday. So just a horrendous stretch in terms of you know, no games to watch on Tuesday and Thursday, and then every team in the world plays on Wednesday. I hate how they've done it that way. It really, really bothers me. More just from trying to, hey, there's nothing happening on these days, and then everything in the world happens on one day. That recap after the 13-game Wednesday is going to be pretty interesting. So we've got 8-3, 13-3. Then we have 11 on Friday, pretty busy Friday, and then a really nice weekend, 7 Saturday, 7 Sunday. So yeah, we're not streaming anybody on a Wednesday. It is going to be impossible. You're not streaming anybody on a Friday with 11 games. But you do have five streaming days. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Eight games, three games, three games, seven games, seven games. So when you're looking at the schedule of teams, you're looking for teams that play on those five days as opposed to on the Wednesday and Friday. It's a really, really big difference. For example, a four-game week for a Memphis Grizzlies player, you might be looking at adding Kyle Anderson. Right off the waiver wire for the week. They have four games, and they're against good opponents. The Wolves, the Hornets, the Suns, the Pelicans. Ooh, that looks great. And then you realize that two of those four games come on Wednesday and Friday, so that you'd only get two games out of that player. Whereas if you added a player from the Sixers, they don't play on Wednesday, and they don't play on Friday. So all four of their games, you can use that guy. And while the player might be worse, maybe it's Shake Milton or Furkan Korkmaz or George Niang, They might be worse, but you use them four times versus two times. That is absolutely vital when looking at daily changes leagues. Do you understand how many games are being played, but equally as importantly, when those games are being played? So let's look at who has the schedule that really gets us going for this week. And it is the Sixers and the Clippers with all four of their games coming on the low volume days. So they are the two absolute standout teams. The Heat 
the Hawks and the Jazz, they come in next with three. They have three quality games. All three of the Jazz games, they only play three. So a three-game week for a Jazz team, for a Jazz player in a daily changes league is actually way more worthwhile than a four-game week for a Pelicans guy because they only have two quality games. And that is counterintuitive to look at it that way. Man, this Jazz guy that I'm adding only plays three, whether that's you know, Royce O'Neal or it's Hassan Whiteside or it's Joe Ingles. They only play three, whereas I'm streaming LaMarcus Aldridge from the Nets, but I can use him twice. Right, even though it's four games versus three. That is vitally important. The Heat and the Hawks, they play four games for the week and three of their four are on the low volume day. So they're your best five teams for looking at getting the most value out of streaming them in for the week. This is for daily changes league. For weekly changes league, streaming doesn't mean anything. When the games are played don't mean anything. It's all about the volume of games and you're getting the right stats in. So that, that is an important difference. So we are talking... We talk about weekly changes leagues later on in the show. We're talking daily changes leagues here at the moment. And it is really, really vitally important that you understand the importance of when the games are played versus just how many of those games are played. It's also vitally important that you understand that Price Picks is awesome. It is the best DFS NBA prop game on the market. Price Picks offers more NBA props than any other DFS prop operator. And all of the superstar players are there, of course, but even the bench guys getting just a handful of minutes. So you can get any prop that you can think of, assists or blocks or threes or points or whatever. Price Picks offers that. And anyone who goes and makes a deposit first time, you can get a 100% instant match deposit up to 100 bucks just by using our promo code, which is NBA. So on Price Picks, you pick two to five players and you get their over-under props, combine them together, and you could win up to 10 times your entry free, but it doesn't just have to be basketball. You can do multi-sport entries as well. So you can do Patrick Mahomes over under two and a half interceptions or whatever they've set it out this week, plus Giannis's over under of one and a half blocks, however they've set it this week. You can add them all together, different sports. Price Picks also has an award-winning app available on the App Store or on Google Play, and entries can be made in 60 seconds or less, and it's that easy. Price Picks offers safe and fast withdrawals as well, so don't hesitate. Check out pricepicks.com and use the promo code NBA or go to your App Store and download the app. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. This is a problem you might be familiar with. You've got your live sport on one device. You've got your shows you watch somewhere else. You've got your highlights you watch on your phone. Then you've got to go borrow your neighbor's login for something else. It's all over the shop. It's confusion. It's chaos. I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It is called Direct TV Stream and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there is no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required and content varies by package. Let's look at the next package on this show, and that is the back-to-backs and how they work for the week. Now, we do not care at all about any back-to-backs that involve Wednesday or Friday, except in the situation of guys that might be resting. And there's not that many of those players who are resting you know, consistently on back-to-backs. The guys we need to watch for are you know, Mike Conley. That that's, can be an issue if, if him resting back-to-backs, but the Jazz don't have any. Um, we could look at um, Spencer Dinwiddie. In the, for the Wizards, they don't have any. So that's good news. They're probably the two major ones that... You know, Joel Embiid's played through his back-to-backs. Al Horford's played through back-to-backs. So they're, they're probably the ones that we need to worry about. And there's not really too much to look at here. In terms of how the week goes with back-to-backs, on Monday and Tuesday, two teams play. So it's important for streaming. The Sixers and the Hawks. You can add a Sixers player. You can add a Hawks player. You get the two games for the price of one. We'll talk streaming strategies in a sec. Tuesday, Thursday, that's the pseudo back-to-back, as I like to call it. Because again, no point adding someone for a Tuesday, Wednesday back-to-back. You look at the the Blazers or the Bucks because you add them on the Tuesday, you're probably not going to use them on the Wednesday. So you're adding them for one game. You better look for a guy you add on Tuesday, you've got a full roster Wednesday, and then they play again on Thursday. And there's a couple of teams that fit that bill. That is the Sixers again, the Clippers and the Jazz. And then the same thing with Friday being busy. We're looking at the Thursday-Saturday combo. It's the Sixers, the Heat, the Raptors, the Jazz, and the Pacers. And then the only team with a back-to-back on the weekend is the LA Clippers. And we've already talked about them having the, one of the most favorable schedules for this week. So if we're looking at a streaming plan, it is a bit of an interesting week because normally we could go, well, we add a guy here, then we add a guy here. But 
with the way things set up and the way that the schedule goes, like you can add someone for the Monday, Tuesday back to back, which is Sixers and Hawks. No one plays on the Wednesday, so then you add someone for the Thursday, the Thursday Saturday combo, which is fine. There's a few teams that play that. And then you're just left to stream in on the Wednesday, but that's three ads for five games. It's not really ideal use of you know, your waiver ads for the week. Whereas this week, you know, to get the if you want to just get bulk games in, if you had a Sixers player on a Monday, they play Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. All right, so that's four games, and then you can drop after Saturday and then add someone in on the Sunday. So five games for two ads using that. Sixers guy on Monday with the four games, and then you add in the Sunday player. And then you use another one of your ads on Tuesday to get a Clippers guy in, and they play Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. So that is, using three waiver ads, you get nine games. That's, that's pretty, a pretty good result. It, it's not, it's, it is a weird week where it's hard to really bulk up and get, you know, two games for every ad, but nine games, well, nine games for three ads is awesome. All right. That, that's some really, really good value that you can get. So consider, you know, adding a Sixers guy on Monday, adding a Clippers guy on Monday, even though they don't play. And there you go. Eight games for two ads. Then you've got two more ads left for the week where you can, you know, drop that Sixers guy for the Sunday, or if you've got something else you want to drop, you can move around and get that going at any other point during the week for what you need. But that is how you're going to maximize your games played for the week is by attacking the Sixers and attacking the Clippers. So your Terrence Manns and Nick Batum's, Eric Bledsoe, Reggie Jackson if he was dropped, Ivica Zubats, Isaiah Hartenstein, Shake Milton, Furkan Korkmaz, George Niang, Andre Drummond, in shallower leagues, Seth Curry, Tyrese Maxey in shallow leagues if he was dropped. That's where you're going to get your value in this sort of a, a week. If we look at front and back loading of the week, the Kings, the Knicks, and the Mavs do not play on the weekend. So once their games are done on the Friday, they are they are done for the week. So if you are looking to drop people for that, for a Clippers back-to-back, say, the Saturday, Sunday, those guys don't play. So fringe players from those teams, maybe that's Mitch Robinson on the Knicks, Tim Hardaway, Dwight Powell, um, maybe it's Jalen Brunson on Dallas, probably not though. But you can drop them. And then, interestingly, there's an absolute shit ton of teams who do not play until Wednesday. The Rockets, Spurs, Pistons, Raptors, Thunder, Celtics, Cavs, Pacers, Wizards, and Magic. They do not play until Wednesday. So no games Monday, Tuesday. That's a pretty rough start to the week. And then they all play Wednesday where there's 13 games on. So your fringe players on those teams, you have to debate whether it's worth holding. Like... Is it worth holding a fringe guy, Drew Eubanks, on the Spurs? If he doesn't play till Wednesday, when you can use that spot to add a Sixers player, is that worth it? Is it worth having maybe Sadiq Bey? I don't know. Some might say Isaiah Stewart. I'd still prefer to hold him. Chris Boucher is already, yeah, he's a must-drop guy anyway. But if you've still got him, you're not waiting until Wednesday for him to play just for there to be 13 games on and you're not using him at all. Like these are the things that you do have to um, pay a decent amount of attention to. So let's transition now to weekly leagues because this is about grabbing guys who play a lot of games for the week and can contribute and be in your best 10. And I think these guys are available. or not, I think. I know these guys are available in a lot of leagues and they can be had and used and started this week. So in nine category leagues, we're looking at Terrence Mann. The streaming schedule for the Clippers doesn't matter. It's just the fact that he's not rostered in many leagues. He's getting 30 minutes and they play four games. That's really useful. Damian Lee for the Warriors, four games again. Can be a nice scoring option. Jared Vanderbilt, his minutes and production is a little bit all over the place, but I still like the value in the four. Josh the Hitman Hart. I don't know if Ingram's going to play, but I know Zion won't. And Hart, again, should be able to accumulate enough value this week. And then the Shark, Bruce Brown Jr. Lost my mouse. He's another option for the week ahead. If we look at guys you can sit for this week, I think we're looking at Lowry Markkinen. He's still in COVID protocols, and we don't know when he's going to return. And the Cavs only have three games, so if he misses one of those, it's a two-game week. And then that's and his first game would only be on the Wednesday anyway, on a high volume day. So he probably would he wouldn't play until you know, Friday, another high volume, and then he plays Saturday. There's well, actually. Yeah. Scrap that because it doesn't matter in weekly leagues. But only three games, he's probably going to play two with COVID protocols. 
Alperen Sengun. The Rockets only play the three games this week. Daniel Tice is back. Not a, I still believe in stashing Sengun, but not a start this week. Don't start any Magic players would be my advice with only two games. And don't start any Wizards players with the exception of Bradley Beal. So no Harrell, no Gafford, no Kuzma, no Dinwiddie. Wouldn't bother with any of those guys this week. I wouldn't bother with starting Keldon Johnson with three games for the Spurs, nor would I bother with um, uh, Jordan Clarkson for the Jazz. J-O-R-D-A-N-C-L-A-R-K-S-O-N. So the difference here is obviously in a daily changes league, Clarkson's more valuable because those three games come on low-volume days. But in a weekly league, he's only got the three, so there are going to be better options out there who can produce by giving you 33% more games played, which is what four games is in compared to three. So that's how I would be looking at that. I'd also be looking at Thanksgiving, which is coming up. And we all know Thanksgiving's about food. It's about family. But sometimes that food is full of calories and sugar. Built Bar is not. It is the perfect time for Built Bar to be introduced as the new holiday dessert. You can feast on something delicious and feel good about it. An average slice of a coconut cream pie has got 300 calories. A coconut Built Bar, 130 calories. What a big difference. And only four grams of sugar. These are low carb, low sugar, low fat, and high protein bars that are going to help you not put on too many pounds over the Thanksgiving uh, weekend. They're also covered in 100% real chocolate, and you can throw them out there, distribute them. Like, you know, here, everyone, I brought Built Bars. Don't worry about don't worry about Auntie's pie. We've got our Built Bars here. It's going to keep us trim, taut, and terrific, and we're going to be loving the taste of these Built Bars. Check out all the flavors they're going to release as well, plus big Black Friday sales at Built.com. So head to Built.com. Use our promo code LOCKED15 and you can save 15% off Built Bars. So go to Built.com and use that promo code LOCKED15. Let's go to some points leagues now and look at some guys that can be added for the week as well as some guys that we could sit in points leagues. I'd be looking at adding punch bob ship bloke Bobby Portis. Dylan Brooks is going to return. I think he's worth an ad. Terrence Mann and Jared Vanderbilt and Josh Hart we've already referenced. Nick Batum with four games for the Clippers. We still don't know the status of Marcus Morris, so Batum's going to be viable. And then LaMarcus Aldridge. While I talked about him as an example earlier on, as in his uh, daily changes value is not that high with only two quality games, but with four full games for the week, Aldridge has been producing at a pretty good level. And he's available in over 50% of leagues, so there is enough there for me to say, yeah, look, he's an ad for the week ahead with four games on. And then we look at players that we can sit in points leagues. All Magic players, sit them down. I think all Wizards players, even maybe including Bradley Beal, could be sat down. In a 10-team league, I don't think that two games from Bradley Beal is worth starting this week. In a category league, it's really borderline for me, and it depends who else you have. Larry Markinen again. I think Mitchell Robinson is a pretty clear sit in a points league. He's not really even worth rostering in a points league, but he is rostered in a lot of spots. I think Tim Hardaway with only three games for the Mavericks. We can find better options out there. And if it's a Zubat, I don't think he's going to be worth starting. He does have four games. I just don't really love his overall production in a points league. That'll do it for today's show. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app. But if you're here on YouTube, drop a thumbs up, drop a comment, follow, share, thumbs up, bells, all that stuff. You know how to do it. Guys, we're done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.